Olivia here in Boston, 352 in the mile. Uh, how are you feeling about the race? Um, kind of indifferent about it. I think definitely wasn't really the race plan I was going for. Um, we're out really hard, and I feel like we haven't really touched a lot of speed stuff. So I think I I think we we're like 54 low for the first four, and that I like felt pretty shitty immediately. So. I think coming back into 60, it's kind of hard to like call your way back out of that and kind of like get back on the pace. So, um, you know, had to do a lot of work, like kind of the last 700. And I was actually really happy with how I kind of fought back after basically getting passed by uh, Lalo Herrera. So I felt like I kind of mustered up a little something in the end there. But yeah, I was hoping to be, you know, in the like 348, 349 range. Um, and just, I think with a different race, you know, I could have been there, um, but you know, not everything's perfect. I think honestly, like that second, that second heat was almost perfect, and I'm not really sure why they ended up, you know, switching around some of the guys that ended up being in different heats. But um, you know, I think if we could have gotten, you know, the right heat, the right pacing, um, it would have been perfect. But you know, you just gotta kind of get in the groove of going out fast. I feel like that's what a lot of the diamond leagues are like. So. Um, yeah, just gotta adapt. So I felt like I still was pretty gritty and like did as much as I could with the race. Yeah. So you were going off to three, like just sub three fifty, or you actually the American record? Um, I think you know I didn't really. It's it's hard to know really where I am. I feel like I've been training really well, um, but it's just such a different um, kind of type of training. So it's hard to know exactly where I am, especially like over a mile, not having raced it yet um, this season. Like I think a 3K, you know, we've been doing basically everything is strength. So um, a 3K, you can, you can fake it a little bit. And I feel like, you know, I didn't really have the clothes I wanted to um, two weeks ago at Milrose. And I felt like we kind of worked on some of that stuff over the last two weeks. But yeah, still just like a hard way to run it. And I would have liked to be, yeah, like at least in range where I like, felt like I could have had an opportunity to kind of strike at the American record, but um, today just wasn't that day. So uh, I don't doubt that it'll come in the future, but um, yeah, still kind of just getting adapted. I really didn't race for like seven months uh, after Worlds. So uh, just kind of getting back in the groove of that as well. Yeah, how long did it take for your uh, injury to heal? And how's the transition about? Yeah, I mean, I basically took like almost two months off after Worlds. And then got back to I did one workout at home, and then got back to Eugene and was immediately thrown into the swing of things. So um, I felt like I definitely had a lot of adapting to do in the fall. But once we got up to like Flagstaff, I felt like you know I was kind of you know in my stride with the with the new training and kind of you know just adapted to you know the guys and everything. So uh, I felt like I had a really good like seven or eight week block in Flag as well. So. Yeah, I mean, like, I can't complain about anything. There's been really no hiccups in the last couple months. Um, it's just, yeah, getting back and, and racing a little bit more and, like, pushing myself and, and getting used to, like, that that spot where you're really hurting again. So, yeah. Yeah, well, a lot of guys in that first year in Bowerman, you know, they, they'll struggle a little bit. They don't come out and run 7.34 yeah. uh, in that first few months. So were you pretty pleased with how that went? Yeah, definitely. I think I was really fortunate to have kind of that transition year where I wasn't in college with before joining a team. Um, so I think that helped me and kind of having some experience on like the bigger stages. Um, and now just like getting in the swing of things has definitely been a lot harder. Um, and definitely, you know, kind of some of that stuff that we didn't touch a lot um, under my last program. So um, yeah, just adapting to that, getting used to some new stimulus. And um, yeah, I think really in the long run, once we get to, you know, June, July, August, it's gonna start paying off a lot. I think, you know, I was talking to my agent and he was like, if you had run 357, I would have been concerned. And honestly, if I had run 347, it would have been a little bit concerning just because it's so early. So um, yeah, I think we're going to go back to Eugene, hunker down there for a little bit, just get in some really good training, some volume, and hopefully get into some diamond leagues and just some fast races and go after some good times and really just like go for wins. You had uh, teammates at USA's and, and in Europe as well. Did you consider going to either of those races, or why, why'd you end up here at BU? You know, I think really for me, just like with so long off racing, I don't think I was ready 
to go into some of those really big meets. Like USA's, I probably could have done, um, but you know, Josh Thompson was there, but he was doing a lot of racing. He raced three weeks in a row. He was going to come here and make it a fourth week, but decided to shut that down. And I think just like for me, I want to have as consistent of training as possible. And you know, I think the racing comes pretty naturally, and just getting used to a lot more of the uh, of the training stuff. So um, yeah, kind of just picked and choose, wanted to do a 3K to start, and then, yeah, a mile, and you know, was maybe gonna do the 1500 at sound running, but um, I think right now, it's just like such a long-term goal with the season, so like, I just wanna train, and just like, you know, continue to progress there, and I have the right guys around me, and um, yeah, just continue to push myself in training, and soon the racing will come, and we'll get more consistent, like definitely outdoors and towards USA's and even after I want to race a lot. So trying to just have like a really good base under me before that. Has there been any talk of uh, the dreaded 10K moving up in distance or is Jerry sort of having you stick with the Jerry the said at the very earliest after 2028. So, so you got a couple I, I was very <laughs> pleased with that answer. I still think that's too soon, but uh, yeah, definitely nothing, nothing of that type of thing super soon. I think he definitely thinks I'm a 5k guy and I'm still trying to prove that I'm a 1500 guy so uh, you know maybe I'll just fall somewhere in between maybe I'll do both maybe I'll specify one but for now yeah kind of kind of in that middle ground so still trying to figure out re where I really belong. Have you decided this year which event to go after? No I think I think both of them are good options I think I thought it was really funny when Drew said the that the like 5k team's impossible to make because like it is definitely the deepest team and so many guys that could kind of be on either side. Um, so for me, I'll have to pick. I think I could be really competitive in a 5K, but I also just want to keep developing the 1500 as well. And I think, you know, seeing guys like Yard run, you know, some of the stuff that he's been running, it's really inspiring. And like, I, I want to definitely be on that level and kind of, you know, compete with him. I think, you know, he's kind of the guy that's that's at the world stage right now um, in that event and like I think I could be right up there with him I raced him all throughout high school and college so um, yeah I definitely I think the 15 is what I'd hope to do but I might do both who knows yeah. and why did you choose to join Bauman rather than you know you could have stayed with Ben Thomas do what Cole's doing right now yeah um, why did you choose to join Bauman I think I, I was at the point where um, you know it was kind of up in the air with that group and um, you know, I had so much success, so much success there, and it was like a really, really hard decision. And obviously, like those, those are some of my best friends. And you know, Ben Thomas had been absolutely nothing but, but great to me, and um, you know, an amazing coach. But you know, I, I think I had to kind of make the choice to explore what what was really working. Um, and I just saw, you know, Bowerman, and you see what like kind of the year that Grant had last year, and everything, and you know. The, the nice thing is it's not like it's not like the NBA or something where you sign long-term contracts like it's pretty fluid like I didn't even have to sign anything and I was on Bowerman so you know you kind of have that option to go go where fits you and I think I really wanted to you know give Bowerman a try and see what like like I said like that different stimulus it's it's very different gears when it comes to the training and stuff so um, yeah I'm just like excited to see where it goes and um, really the the long-term goal is 2028 and you know being the best we can for like Olympics on the American soil so you know have a couple of years to see if you know this is the right group um, or you know a couple of years maybe go somewhere else maybe go back to you know Beth Thomas who knows but um, for now I think it's been a really good transition and um, I think again like you said this is this is a program that you need a year or two to kind of get adjusted to so I'm um, going to give myself that and, you know, just bank on making that, that Paris team and um, kind of go from there. Was staying in Eugene a, a, like a pro or a con for you in making the decision? I don't know. Uh, I was really excited to go to Portland, but I also think probably a better situation for me than like some of the other guys coming from Portland to Eugene. Like, I can't imagine 34-year-old Evan having <laughs> to move his child and his wife to a college town. And for me, like, I got a bunch of friends there. I mean, all the, all the guys are there now. So uh, it, w it wasn't a bad transition, but I also was kind of looking forward to a change. So, but again, that's like, we go to Flagstaff, we go to Park City, we'll be in St. Ritz and stuff over the summer. So 
Like, I, I can't complain that much. When you are in town, do you still link up with, like, the, the Oregon Track Club guys for easy runs and stuff? Or? Yeah, absolutely. I see them all the time. I mean, like, those, I lived with Reed for five years. Cole's been one of my best friends. You know, Matt, Jack, all, all of them. So, um, I see them all the time. And I mean, I haven't been back there in almost three months now. So, I'm looking forward to going back and kind of having some time just, like, lay low, be in my own space, and, like, hang out with those guys, get back to training and kind of doing all that stuff. So. Thanks so much. Thank you awesome. Yeah.